Alrighty, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Amanda. I'm the marketing director here at State Listings, uh, my state MLS, New York State MLS. And today we're going to talk about the best ways to optimize your website to help you reel in more leads this summer. So before we talk about the best ways to optimize your website, let's talk a little bit about why you need a website for your business, because it's something that I'm, I'm seeing folks start to drop off or not really invest in their website. So I'm kind of curious, do, how many of you here have a website? So this is kind of what I was talking about. I've been a little surprised lately because I've, I've seen fewer and fewer folks investing in a website. And right now, among our attendees here today, that's about 60-40. So about 40% of you don't have a website right now. I see a question in the comments already about how to afford a website without gro going broke. And we are going to be talking about that in just a moment. So let's talk about why you need it first. One of the main reasons is to get in front of leads. I know that's gonna seem kind of obvious, but first things first, your website's a marketing tool. Buyers and sellers more than ever are researching everything online before they even reach out to an agent. So a lot of agents are used to, you know, a potential buyer or seller reaching out to them, that being the beginning of the buyer or seller's journey with real estate. And that's just no longer the case. Folks are doing a lot of research online before they even start the process of working with an agent. So they're going to they're going to be looking for you uh, and you need to make sure that they like what they find and that they can find you. Websites allow you to feature your listings, collect leads, and they provide information on upcoming events such as some of the live videos or webinars uh, or any resources you may put out, which we'll be discussing a little bit later today. In addition, adding a blog to your website can help you better target your ideal client with tailored content just for their needs. Next is having a website allows you to put your best foot forward. When somebody Googles your name, if you don't own the top slot that comes up, so for example, you know, if you Googled Amanda from State Listings and what popped up, you know, wasn't our corporate website and, and instead was some random review on another website, we can't control that. So you can't control a buyer's first impression of you if you don't own the top link for your own name. For example, a lot of us have had a bad Zillow review. If you had a really unreasonable customer, you know, it happens. You know, you had a buyer who was just unhappy with you for some reason. That could be the first result that comes up when somebody's searching your name if you don't have a website. So they might just see that bad Zillow review and that might be the only impression. When you create your own website and you follow SEO best practices, you're in full control of your image. And that being said, you do need to make sure that the image that you put out is good. And we'll be reviewing what your website needs a little bit later. One of the most important points is that a website makes you look credible. Um, we've all heard about the abundant wire fraud scams that have been targeting specifically renters and buyers. And because of that, buyers and renters are getting more cautious which is good, we, we, we want well-informed consumers. However, if they are searching for you online, they see one of your listings and they can't find you anywhere except for that one listing site, you look like a scammer, you're suspicious. So a well-designed website that has detailed testimonials, that's kept up to date, that has other listings, as well as your information really adds credibility. Linking to your social media accounts, including photos and biographies of you, and sharing your listings helps buyers discern real businesses like yours from scams. That being said, now that we're all on board with uh, why you need a website, uh, let's talk a little bit about what you need on your website. The first thing I want to know from you guys is when was the last time that you updated your website? Did, have you updated it within the last week? Have you updated it within the last month? Maybe the last year, have you not updated it since you made it? Or either more frequently, less frequently, let us know. So about 40% of you have updated within the last week, which is awesome. Uh, about 15% within the last month, which is really respectable for, for your website. You know, about a quarter of you within the last year, uh, and about a quarter of you haven't. Since I assume a lot of you are going to be heading off to update your websites right after this webinar, let's talk a little bit about what you want to prioritize when you're doing that. Bare minimum, your website needs your company name, your logo, and your listings. Those listings should preferably have high-res photos. Buyers should also be able to search your listings by multiple criteria, right? They're not going to know necessarily the specific address that they're looking for when they're on your site. So you want to have them be able to search number of bedrooms, bathrooms, whatever their criteria are. 
you also need to have your contact information there. Obviously, right? Your website's there for buyers to get in contact with you. So you'll want your email, your phone number, and your office address. Uh, if you want to make sure that spammers who might look at your website aren't going to be able to just grab your email and start signing you up for a bunch of mailing lists and all those other things, you can also replace that with a contact form. Benefits of a contact form is that you can have multiple agents checking that contact form and making sure that any leads who come to your website are getting the fastest service possible. You also need to have the names and photos of any of your agents. You know, if you're the broker creating a website for your whole office, so that anyone who reaches out on behalf of your company, folks can easily check and make sure uh, that they're doing business in good faith, that they are actually affiliated with your company. You know, you wanna lend that credibility to your agents as well. You also need to keep your website updated. If your site hasn't been updated since 2018, it looks really unprofessional. In addition, anyone checking your website may wonder if your business is still operational. You know, we saw a lot of change in the industry, especially in 2020, and some folks who were working might have taken a break, might have stepped back. If you haven't updated your website since before then, folks might not know if your business is still around. In addition, this all goes back to keeping it credible. You want to make sure that folks can discern your business from all of the wire fraud scams, from everything else going on out there. The bonus is that some websites can update automatically with information that you put into the MLS. That being said, I wanna know how you guys update your websites. Do you have a web developer who handles all your website updates for you? Do you update yourself, maybe you're really tech savvy? Does your website update automatically from a feed, either from your MLS or for another, from another service? Have you not updated your website since the day you started? Or is there some other method you have? So it looks like about 15% of you have a web developer who's handling all of your website updates. That can be really great because they're professional, they can make sure it looks great. However, when you're relying on somebody who's not really in-house, it can take a little bit longer to get those updates that you really need. About a third of you update your website yourselves. That's really great if you have kind of the technical know-how or you have a really easy to manage backend. A little over a third of you update automatically from some kind of feed. And about 15% of you can't update your website. So let's, let's talk about why you might want to kind of switch to a system where you have a little bit more control. So like I was just mentioning, you really need to make sure that your website is easy to navigate. The main goal of your website is giving users information and collecting leads from them. While some extra features are awesome, too many get in the way and distract from your business. When you get to having too many pages, it becomes difficult for users to get the information that they're looking for and they're more likely to just leave your site and try to find it somewhere else. So I see a lot of folks adding features that that just aren't necessary, that aren't relevant, um, and that's where you're going to start to lose leads. One of the best things you can do is to ask friends or former clients, folks who aren't members of the real estate industry, who don't think the same way as you do, have them try using your site and tell you what they find clunky or confusing about it. You know, a lot of us use companies who are used to working with real estate clients. You know, we're asking our coworkers for advice on websites, but those are all folks who are in the real estate industry, right? They're gonna understand kind of what you mean when you name pages specific things, the specific structure of your website. So it's really important to have somebody who's not in the real estate industry, um, who doesn't really understand your business, come in and try to use your website to get specific information that they're looking for and to have them tell you hey, here's where I got lost. Here's what needs a little bit more clarification and figure out how you can work that into your web design. If you don't know where to start, one of the most important pieces of advice I can give you is to just look at other top brokerages, both in your area and across the country. Uh, like I mentioned, Dave will be showing you guys some really great websites a little bit later in the presentation and talking about what works. Make sure that if you see any major trends that are repeated across multiple sites, if you see a feature that most of them have, you know, that's, that's something to really take note of and consider implementing yourself. Just make sure that you aren't copying another brokerage's website wholesale. You know, it's really important to have your own distinct branding so that when your clients arrive on your website, they know that it's you. If you need a new website, like I mentioned, we'll be talking about some ways that we can help you without breaking the bank at the end of the webinar today. And our offer will save you about 500 bucks. So worth sticking around until the end. But for right now, I'm gonna talk about how to really optimize your website. You know, we just talked about the absolute bare minimum of what needs to be on your site. Let's talk about what separates the great websites from just the good ones. Before we go into that, I wanna know what's the most interesting part of your website? 
what are you doing to really attract buyers? What do you think really grabs attention? Is it your listings? Do you have really, really beautiful listing photos with well-written descriptions? Uh, is it the overall design of your website? Is it really intuitive, appealing? Do you host educational content on your website, such as blogs or videos? Uh, or is it something else? So it looks like for about half of you, that's the listings, which is great. You know, that's what buyers are coming to your website for. Um, and about 40% of you, it's the design. So I'd really love to see what some of these awesome websites look like. And only about 8% of you are doing educational content. So for those of you who are already doing that, that's awesome. And for folks who are just now hearing that this, uh, you know, might be something to include, don't worry, we're going to go into that in just a couple of minutes. So when we talk about going from just a good website to a really excellent one, the first thing is obviously your listings. You really, your website is a marketing tool, not just for those listings, but for your business as a listing agent or as a broker. When you're posting listings on your website, you aren't just catering to buyer leads, your potential seller leads are seeing what you could do for their listing as well. Each listing should have photos, as many fields as possible filled out and a well-written description. We've talked before about making sure that your description is romance copy, which means describing not just, you know, the, the features of the listing that anybody can see from looking at the bullet points, but describing how somebody would feel in the home. Parts of it that you love that can't really be shown off in those really quick and dry stats about the listing. What's nearby, what's great about the town. Just really using that description to help potential buyers fall in love. Talking about those photos, you should make sure that you're using your own or professional photos rather than using Google Maps. First of all, the professional photos will look a lot better. They'll show off the listing. I've seen some professional photographers work absolute miracles with properties to make them look as good as possible. And on top of that, using photos from Google Maps is copyright infringement. So please make sure that you are using your own or professional photos to put your best foot forward. You can also make sure that you're maximizing your potential leads by including a contact form on each listing page so that rather than trying to find your contact information and getting lost, getting frustrated, calling a different real estate agent, those buyers are able to contact you about a listing right on the same page without leaving. The next thing is to make sure your website is mobile friendly. Mobile web traffic surpassed desktop back in 2017. It's been four years. So having a responsive, meaning mobile friendly website is no longer a bonus. It is a requirement. When the size of the browser that a user is viewing your website in changes, your website needs to change as well. Nobody's going to scroll horizontally anymore. If you want to go above and beyond, make sure that you're also adding a number where buyers can text you. Potential leads are searching properties all the time. And that might include when they're not really available by phone. You know, all of us have maybe checked out listings on a lunch break, or even I know a lot of folks search for homes really late at night. They're obviously not going to want to call you and wake you up, uh, but they are much more likely to send a text message since they know that you'll just respond when you get to it. Aside from that texting number we talked about, you want to make sure you have multiple ways for folks to reach you. Like I said, buyers search for homes at the weirdest hours, and you need to make sure that they can contact you on their time. That doesn't mean you need to be available 24 seven. Please sleep sometimes, I promise it'll wait. Uh, but as long as you have options that are comfortable for buyers to contact you on their time, uh, you are covered. So we were just talking about having a texting number. A great thing that you can do with that is to make it a Google voice number, or there are a whole bunch of other software providers out there that can provide a text number that is separate from the number on your phone. With a Google Voice number, you can have multiple agents able to check the same number, which means that your agents can take over kind of that lead texting line and shift and making sure, again, that those leads get really fast service because somebody's always responsible for checking the leads and responding to them. In addition, especially if you're posting on social media, make sure that you have your Facebook and Instagram accounts set up, um, especially with Facebook business accounts or your professional Facebook pages. Buyers will be able to message you without leaving your Facebook page. Um, and you definitely want to have that set up and make sure that you're checking those direct messages, checking your messages regularly. You can also create a, an autoresponder on your Facebook page. And we've talked about this a little bit in our webinar last week. When it comes to this isn't just about your website, this is marketing yourself in general. It really helps to 
have a niche, have an area where you are the subject matter expert. In a 2019 homes.com survey, the top qualities consumers wanted in their real estate agent were understanding what I want and knowledge of the local market. So make sure to know your niche, make sure to know where you are the market expert and make sure that anyone who visits your website can tell. So that can include a page just for your ideal customer on your website and coordinating your social media around that. Like we've mentioned before, since you're the local expert, you know, you can share uh, your favorite local businesses, especially if you work with buyers who are moving in from out of town, you could have a page for them that just says, hey, you know, if you're coming in for showings, here are the best local businesses to check out, places to eat while you're here, while you're walking around, you know, the, the coffee shop around the corner that you're going to fall in love with. Um, that'll be a regular coffee shop when you're here, you know, here are our recommendations. And you can even coordinate with local business owners to kind of have them maybe post an ad for you as well uh, in exchange. You can also put testimonials and resources on your site from buyers in that niche you've worked with before. If you, for example, work in an area where a lot of military families settle and you have a lot of experience working with them, you know, make sure that you're really, the testimonials you receive are talking about the fact that you're a subject matter expert for those folks. Of course, you can all sell or help anybody buy. Um, it doesn't mean that you need to exclude other business, but knowing what kind of buyers and sellers make you the most successful, knowing your area of expertise can increase referrals from folks who are in that niche and also can help focus your marketing efforts to make sure that you're spending your money, uh, spending your marketing budget where it's most effective. So when we're talking about being the subject matter expert, one of the biggest things you can do to help you market yourself, to help get leads from your website, to help get more folks to your website is to create your own content. What you want to do is think about what questions and concerns your ideal buyer has or your ideal seller and add resources, create blogs and other kinds of content that answer those questions. So, for example, if you work with a lot of folks who are downsizing, create blog posts about the best ways to you know, decide what to move into a new home when you're downsizing, create best of lists for your, the area where you're working. You can even create more comprehensive guides. So you can use either PowerPoint or Google Slides to create an ebook that's full of a bit more information than a blog and use that as gated content. So from PowerPoint or Google Slides, you can export as a PDF. And then on your website, you can include a form that asks folks to fill out their name and email address before they access the guide. And that way you're getting their name, their email, their phone number, so you can add them to your mailing list so you can start reaching out to those leads. Gated content doesn't just have to be guides. There are a lot of folks out there who I know you have first time buyer courses that you host in your office. Consider recording the next one of those and offering that as a piece of gated content. Other recorded videos can be used for gated content as well. Those gated content pieces can also be used to help you collect leads during live events. So we talked about this a little bit last week. For example, if you're having an open house and you have a flyer, if you're having a virtual open house and you have a flyer about the property, you can ask any potential leads who visit your virtual open house to send you an email or to just share their email address with you and you'll email them a flyer about the property. And this way, even though uh, it's a virtual open house, you're able to get that information, the names, emails, phone numbers of folks who are coming by, and you're able to share that information with them and also add them to your mailing lists. Um, it's the same concept here. You know, if you're having a webinar like we are now, you can say, hey, I have this guide available. Um, if this is applicable to you, I'd love to share it with you. Please just share your name and your email either in the chat uh, or you can email me directly. Here's my email address. Uh, and I will get this guide right out to you. That is one of the best ways that you can collect leads. But without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Dave to show you guys some examples of great real estate websites. Hey, everyone. Hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Amanda, thank you so much for showing really what it takes to make a great website even better just by implementing some of the things that you've talked about today. And what I wanted to do now is just kind of take a look at some different websites um, that are out on the internet that are already taking some of the things that you've talked about and have implemented them. And we're gonna do that using 
uh, the My State MLS platform, as well as different websites already being used by My State MLS members. Uh, and because of that, uh, and the reason we're doing that is because at the end of today's presentation, as Amanda said, we have got a very special promotion for everyone joining us today where we can help you build a brand new website essentially for free. So you're going to want to stick around to see how you can get a brand new website designed specifically to your wants and needs pretty much for free. So we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, one of the first things I wanted to talk about is Amanda had just mentioned how you can use your website to collect leads through what's called gated content. And these are things like special videos or special PowerPoint presentations or eBooks that you can utilize on your website to essentially collect lead information from potential buyers, from potential sellers, whoever your market is to potentially collect new leads. And I just wanted to show you, we actually have something like that in place on my state MLS uh, and which we're gonna point you to right now anyways, because on our homepage at mystatemls.com, we've got this resources tab here at the top right corner. And not only can you view our blog of all of our recent blog posts, which are pretty much being updated several times a week with brand new articles, brand new video replays. We also have our schedule for upcoming webinars. You can watch replays of our past webinars. But right here is what I wanted to show you is we have our guides and our eBooks. Uh, these are the things that Amanda and her team puts together. And we offer those free to you on how you can go ahead and improve your business. Uh, so again, today we've been talking about what you can do to your website to make your website more profitable, would be gaining more leads to get more traffic and how it can be used to enhance your business. After this webinar uh, series this month, we'll be making that guide available right here on our website. Again, you're also going to be able to see some past eBooks that we've created, uh, including our one making a splash on social, which takes a lot of the ideas that we've talked about uh, today and last week. It gives you a brand new view of that. We also have our Lights Camera Sold series, which we did earlier this year, where we focused on what you can do to make videos that are gonna be enticing, that are gonna be engaging to the public. Uh, so make sure you check those out. Again, you can just visit our website and grab these at any time just by going to mystatemls.com, clicking on the guides and eBooks option from the resources dropdown. And again, these are free downloads. And you can offer things like this on your website because when you click it, what this is gonna do is going to allow you to be able to collect leads from potential buyers, potential sellers who are interested in getting that ebook or that promotional packet, whatever it is that you're offering. Uh, so that was one of the first things I wanted to talk about. Earlier today, Amanda also talked about how you have to control the narrative. Having a good website and having a good online presence is super important, especially when potential customers or clients are doing their research. We know everyone's doing their due diligence. And if you don't have a good online presence, you may not necessarily be controlling the narrative. The first thing that someone may find if they do a Google search of your name is they may see a bad review or a review from five, six, seven years ago that may not shine the best light on you. So what I did is I actually just did a quick search of just my name. I searched David and state listings because I know Amanda said she searched Amanda and state listings. And the first thing that should come up is her name. For me, the first things that come up are my profile on the statelistings.com website, followed by my position and my profile on LinkedIn. So just through having uh, essentially good Google juice and good search engine optimization, if anyone were to search me as a professional, luckily the first things that come up are going to be my profiles on our company website, as well as my LinkedIn profile. So now that I've kind of gotten that stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and let's start taking a look at some of the websites. What I wanted to do is, again, Google is pretty much the first place people are going. If they don't know your .com, they're going to just go to a search engine and try to find your company that way. And I know that there's a company uh, called Maddox Five Star Realty. And what I did is I just went ahead and I searched their company name. And because of, again, search optimization, the first things that come up, we can see the very first thing that comes up is their website. That's exactly what you want to happen. After that, what we're seeing is we're seeing their profiles, agent profiles from my state MLS, followed by a Facebook page, as well as a profile looks like on Zillow and realtor.com. So when you do your searches for yourself, 
that's kind of what you're going to want to see is you're going to want to make sure that the first things you're seeing are maybe your company website, followed by your profile on other professional networks. You're not going to want to see something like this guy's a terrible real estate agent.com. You're not going to want to see things like that. So if you can make sure you've got a nice website, nice online presence, so that way you can start to control the narrative and making sure that the things you want the general public to see are the first things that they see. Uh, so what I did is I've just gone ahead and I've, I'll pull up this link. I just clicked the link and this goes right to the company website for Maddox Five Star uh, in Kentucky. So right off the bat, this is a website designed by the team here at State Listings Inc. And this is what you can get as a My State MLS member. And like many sites, uh, we're going to give you full control as to what kind of pages you want to have on your website. And as Amanda mentioned before, uh, sometimes less can be more. You don't want to clutter your page up with all of these different, different parts and pieces to your website. You really just want to have the main basics without getting too complicated because you don't want those potential buyers, those potential customers, those potential clients to be turned off or turned away from your site just because it's hard to navigate, there's just too much going on. So really you just wanna keep things very simple, very basic. Uh, so if we were to look at this website here, again, the first thing we see is we have all of the profiles for the agents at this company. So we could go ahead, we can click on a name, that's gonna give us a profile of their account and see everyone that's involved with the company. So we can see everyone's information there. Below that, we can see we've got homes for sale. We can search for homes. We can see the homes that they've listed. Uh, then again, we've got the basic pages that build up a good website. Really, you're gonna have your homepage, our in-house listings, our about page. Maybe we're gonna have those agent bio pages. And then of course, most importantly, is you're gonna wanna have those contact pages as well. Uh, so we can see on this website, we can see we've got our homepage, We've got featured listings. So that's gonna be the listings that are listed by this company. We've got a page that shows all of the sold listings that they've sold over the years within the, the My State MLS platform. Uh, we also have their listings by city. We're gonna be able to view their team. Again, their contact page. And lastly, that about us page, which gives us a full rundown of everyone at the company. If we want, we could take a look at another website. Again, My State MLS, we offer website designs in part of being a member. And what's cool about that is that's gonna allow you a much more hands-off approach because you're not gonna have to worry about updating your website or keeping it updated routinely because with My State MLS, anything that you add to your My State MLS account, any agents that you add to your company, they're automatically going to populate your My State MLS website. Uh, so here's one of the newer websites that we've created. This one for MH Florida Living. Uh, they deal with manufactured and mobile homes throughout the state of Florida. And we can see is already this site much different than the previous one we just saw, uh, because what they've done is they've put a lot more information on the homepage here. So scrolling at the top, we've got our main, essentially a welcome splash screen that tells us who they are. We've got our search here, it says who we are, their mission as a company, how they can do referrals and offer referrals for those that want to help them sell a home or purchase a home. Then of course, below that, we've got their featured listings as well. Looking at the top of their page, again, this was designed specifically to their specifications. So again, if you wanna have a brand new website and you want that website created through State Listings Inc., you let us know what kind of pages you want involved on your site. MH Florida Living, they wanted to have a, a page called Florida Lifestyle. And this talks about what they do when it comes to buying or selling a home in Florida. What is that Florida lifestyle really all about? And how can they help you achieve that Florida lifestyle that you're looking for? So they've created and they wrote up this biography that they wanted to have. And we were able to put it on there. Next, they've got their Our Team page. And again, with my state MLS and these websites that we can design for you is if you are a company and you add an agent or you remove an agent, what happens is the pages here, the team page will automatically update. So if you're a broker and you are to get a website through my state MLS and your company continues to grow as you add those new agents, 
their accounts will, will be created within the MLS and their profiles will automatically appear within your company website. So here, Brenda is the owner of the company. So we can see her profile here. And just like everyone else, we can see their profile. Uh, and what's cool about this as well is you get your own profile within my state MLS. And within that, that's when you're able to go in. You can see Brenda's got a profile here because she entered this into my state MLS. So if she needed to make any changes, she can do it directly from her my state MLS account. Maybe she got a new cell phone number. She can go in, change out her mobile number. She's going to be able to do that right from her account. Also, Amanda talked about how it's important to have links to all of your different social media. Uh, with the My State MLS platform and our website design services, automatically you can see we've got our Facebook and our Twitter links directly to the MH Florida Living social media pages. So if we were going to go ahead, we can click on the Facebook link and that's going to send us right to the MH Florida Living social media page. And if we were to click on the Twitter icon, again, I'm just opening it up in new tabs, we're going to see that's going to send us right to the social media as well. We want to take a look at some other websites. Again, I just pulled up a couple just because I wanted to show you exactly how things work. Uh, this one is the Hamptons Realty Group. They're on the eastern end of Long Island, known as the Hamptons. So we can see that we've got a wide range of different customers that are using us uh, from different states across the entire country. And as Amanda said earlier, one of the great things about having a website is this is going to be the place that you're going to be able to collect the most leads. We know that when you put a listing on third-party websites like on a Zillow or Realtor.com, you may not get the lead every single time because of the way those websites work. If you were to get a website and you were to integrate, say, IDX, which allows you to display listings from other brokerages on your company website, that's going to allow you to be able to let buyers search your website, find listings in your state. And if they find a property that they like, there's going to be a contact form on every single listing on your website. And when you fill that out, that's going directly to you as a company. So that's going to allow you to collect that lead every single time on your website. And I've gone ahead and I've actually done this with a different site. Uh, this one, Flateau Realty Corp. These guys based in New York City. Uh, and I just did a search for Bayside, New York. So I've pulled up a couple listings through the search. And if I were to go ahead and click on this listing, this property actually not listed by Flateau Realty. This is actually presented from a different brokerage in New York. But if I was to go ahead, fill out this request more information page, that's going to actually send that feedback right back to this company. So they're going to be able to collect buyer's leads through their website just based on having the IDX and other company listings right on their website. Last thing I wanted to show is Amanda mentioned this before, and that's making sure you have a responsive website. And as we mentioned before, having a responsive website means that it's going to look and function properly no matter what platform you're using it on. So right now, again, we're looking at it on a computer screen. So we've got a nice large screen. We've got large photos. We've got our menu at the top. But let's say I was to use this on a phone. We were to shrink it down. We can still see the site works as it's supposed to. Instead of me having to scroll back and forth and try to find menus, everything still functions on the website regardless as to what kind of device I'm on. Instead of me having that long menu across the top, instead we've got a little hamburger menu here in the corner. And we can see all of those same menu options that we had before. So here on Flateau Realty, we've got a home page. We've got an exclusive listings page. We can see listings by borough. They've also broken out a page specific to commercial listings only. They've got an R team page, which shows all of the agents within the company. And they've also created that contact page as well, because they're going to want to be able to collect leads from people that may come across their website. And here on this contact form, we've broken it out. So whoever is visiting the site gets to decide what kind of email they're sending. So here we've got a subject dropdown. We can say, I have a general question. I'd like to buy a property. I'd like to sell a property, or I have feedback about this website. 
So again, we can fill this out and that's gonna go directly to the company, to the brokerage. So that broker is gonna get that feedback form and they can do with it whatever they need to. If it's a buyer's lead, if it's a seller's lead, they're gonna be able to handle that properly and make sure whoever sent that email is getting responded to quickly and efficiently. So now that we've kind of taken a look at some of the websites that are available through my state MLS, we want to know if you need a website. So as Amanda said before, we have a very special offer for you today. And typically the my state MLS website setups are usually $500 for that one time setup. However, if you're to commit to a brand new website and sign your contract before the end of this month, we are going to waive that $500 setup fee. That means we're going to help you create your brand new website completely free just by committing and signing that contract with us. So again, there is some fine print. We're going to just kind of go over that right now. If you want to qualify for this free website design, this is going to be available to brokers that want to create a new website in part of signing up with an office account to New York State MLS or My State MLS. That's gonna cover our basic website packages, which is kind of what we've seen today. Uh, if there are additional features that you do want included onto your brand new website, uh, there may be bills for that. Those are things that we could certainly go over with you. And again, this offer is only valid until the end of the month where you must sign up for that new website and your office account by July 1st. Uh, again, if you're interested in getting that website discount, feel free to contact us at 888-769-7657. Uh, or you can also email Amanda or myself at dave at mystatemls.com. Or you can email Amanda at amanda at mystatemls.com. Uh, until then, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you on future webinars and hopefully we'll see you on My State MLS very soon. Have a great day.